Zezu Pitts was one of the most famed and revered actresses of the silent film era. But while many of her contemporaries struggled to make the transition to talkies, she gracefully adapted to the changing times and found continued success mainly in comedy films that featured sound. Join us as we recount Pitts's incredibly inspiring life story. She may not be the best-known name in Hollywood history, but all of us could take a page from her playbook. Facts First presents Zezu Pitts' continued acting after her cancer diagnosis. Zezu Pitts was born on January 3, 1894 in Parsons, Kansas, to parents Nellie and Rulandis Pitts. She was the third of four children, and her father was a Civil War veteran who lost his legs serving in the war. Reportedly, Zezu got her name based on the names of her father's two sisters, Eliza and Susan. It's been said that to satisfy competing family interests, Zezu's parents simply combined the two names into one that was unique for the time. It might not sound that crazy for all the names we hear these days, but back in the late 19th century, it was pretty out there. Another interesting thing that can be said about her first name is just how often it's been misspelled and mispronounced throughout history. In her 1963 book Candy Hits, published the year she died, Zezu gave the correct pronunciation as Seizu. That being said, when she introduced herself on an episode of I've Got a Secret that aired on September 4th, 1952, she pronounced the name as Zezu. When Pitts was nine years old, her family relocated to Santa Cruz, California. They made the move in search of warmer climate with better employment opportunities. Once in the Golden State, Zezu attended Santa Cruz High School. There, she participated in school plays and developed her love for acting. Pitts made her stage debut in the 1914 and 15 school year, although outside of school, she also participated in community theater. In 1916, she went to Los Angeles and spent the next several months looking for work as a film extra. Eventually, her efforts paid off when she was discovered for more substantive movie roles by revered silent film era screenwriter Francis Marion. Marion cast Pitts as an orphaned slavey girl in his 1917 silent film A Little Princess, which saw her share the screen with legendary Mary Pickford. Her popularity blossomed following a series of one-reeler comedies produced by Universal. She earned her first lead role in a feature-length film in King Vidor's 1919 silent film comedy Better Times. She followed that role up with a performance in Heart of Twenty. The same year, she married her first husband, Tom Gallery. They both appeared in Heart of Twenty, but also went on to appear in three more films together, Bright Eyes and Patsy and A Daughter of Luxury. She was a queen of comedy. Pitts achieved peak fame in the early 30s. During this time, she could frequently be seen in B-movies and comedy shorts while teaming up with Thelma Todd. She played accompanying roles in numerous films, and her stock persona consisted of a fretful, worried, and flustered spinster. This character made her instantly identifiable by her critics and fans, and virtually overnight she became a household name. She was so iconic her likeness was even frequently imitated in cartoons and other movies. Pitts went on to star in several Hal Roach short films and feature-length movies, often joining forces with Thelma Todd as a duo of trouble-prone working girls. Over at Universal, Pitts co-starred in a series of several popular feature-length comedy films opposite Slim Somerville. Transitioning between comedy shorts and features, by the advent of the talkie, Pitts became known for being a specialist in comedic roles. She shined in dramatic roles. Pitts had many hidden talents. One of those was her adeptness at performing in dramas. She was given the most significant tragic role of her acting career when she appeared in Eric von Stroheim's 1924 seven and a half hour psychological drama, Greed. When Pitts was cast in the role, the decision sent a shockwave throughout Hollywood. But it also proved Pitts was capable of drawing tears with her anguished demeanor. She was no longer seen as a one-trick pony. Not only could she make audiences laugh, but she could also evoke strong emotional responses. This versatility is why she ended up being remembered as one of the greatest actresses of her time. Greed ended up being extensively edited prior to getting a release. The final theatrical cut ran just a little over two hours. Even with those cuts, the movie failed initially at the box office. Since then, however, it's been restored to over four hours and is now considered one of the best movies ever made. Impressed with Pitts' performance, von Stroheim ended up labeling her as the greatest dramatic actress he'd ever worked with. He featured her in several of his subsequent films, including The Honeymoon, Walking Down Broadway, and The Wedding March. 
in Walking Down Broadway, Pitts once again delivered a stellar dramatic performance, but the film's subject material caused some controversy. Her character showed a repressed romantic interest in one of her girlfriends. In the end, the studio chose to reshoot those scenes, instead showing Pitts playing the girl's companion for laughs. Von Strom was also stripped of his directorial credit, and the film was released under the name Hello Sister in 1933. While she shined in dramatic roles, the public was so used to seeing Pitts in comedies that they often didn't take her dramatic efforts seriously. When she was cast as the distraught mother of a young soldier in the 1930 war drama All Quiet on the Western Front, test audiences initially reacted to her performance with unintentional laughter. Because of this, her scenes ended up being refilmed with Beryl Mercer. In 1936, RKO Pictures was looking to replace one of the actresses in its Hildegard Withers murder mystery series. When Helen Broderick left the role, Pitts was chosen as her successor. While theoretically this casting choice could have been seen as a good idea, as Pitts seemed to fill the role of the prim and proper spinster schoolmistress quite well, fans of the series and mystery genre couldn't accept her as a cunning sleuth who outwitted the police. After appearing in two of these films, the series got scrapped entirely. Returning to her roots and breaking new ground in the 1930s, Pitts began working in radio. She appeared in quite a few of the earliest Fibber McGee and Molly episodes, portraying a fluttery Dane who was constantly on the lookout for a husband. After Marlon Jordan was forced to take a leave from the series due to illness, Pitts made several guest appearances opposite the lead Jim Jordan as a Fibber. Pitts went on to guest star on several variety shows, sharing the airways with stars like Rudy Valley. Al Jolson, W.C. Fields, and Bing Crosby. She played Miss Manny Wayne on the soap opera Big Sister. She made her Broadway debut in 1944 in the mystery Ramshackle Inn. It was actually specifically penned with her in mind and did well. After its first run, Pitts took the show on the road. Around this time, she was also a frequent contributor to Summerstock theaters. In fact, every year she performed in the Norma Mitchell play Post Road. After World War II, Pitts continued to appear in comedies like Life with Father. By the 1950s, however, she focused mainly on television. This led her to land her best-known role in a series playing second banana to the late great Gale Storm in the 1956 CBS sitcom The Gale Storm Show. In 1961, she was cast as Earl Hodgins' co-star in an episode of Guest Word Ho, titled Lonesome's Gal. And the following year, she appeared in an episode of Perry Mason. She kept acting even after her diagnosis. Pitts was diagnosed with cancer in the mid-1950s. While her declining health certainly made working more difficult, Pitts refused to let her diagnosis hold her back from doing what she loved. She continued to act, appearing in television shows and films like 1963's The Thrill of It All and Kubrick's It's a Mad, 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 Mad World right up until the very end. Zezu Pitts passed away June 7, 1963 at age 69. For her many contributions to the world of cinema, Pitts has been awarded with a number of honors and accolades. In 1960, she was introduced into the Hollywood Walk of Fame, and more recently in 1994, she was honored with her image appearing on a U.S. postal stamp. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you remember Zazu Pitts? Have you ever seen any of her work? Let us know in the comments section below.